is our home. She provides everything we need, fresh water, clean air, all kinds of food. There's a bounty of animal, vegetable, and mineral wealth which now supports seven billion humans. But seven billion people have had an impact on this planet to the extent that we have brought about a new geologic age, the Anthropocene, the age of man. People and their domestic animals have replaced most other creatures and dramatically changed the planet, even the temperature of the atmosphere and the chemistry of the oceans. Humans are thriving, but for the rest of life on Earth, our impact is comparable to the comet stripe which wiped out the dinosaurs. The fate of these large mammals reflects what has happened to everything else, birds, amphibians, reptiles, and fish. 90% of large fish have been wiped out in the last 50 years. Half of the world's coral reefs are dead. And then there's the bugs. Recent studies in Europe have found that 75% of insect life is gone. We have chopped up nature into small parcels, isolated from the other small parcels that persist. Even America's best idea, the national parks, are isolated islands of habitat, and that is a formula for extinction. The biosphere is a very thin layer of life. How much biodiversity can we eliminate before we reach a tipping point? I grew up in a forest full of songbirds. Half of them are now gone. We have lost a billion birds in North America in the last 50 years. And I think it's a moral issue as well. We are not the only creatures who inhabit this planet. What gives us the right to push all these other species to the brink of extinction? I had the privilege of filming this herd of elf elephants for a week, and let me assure you, elephants love their children too. We need to understand what will it take to restore and maintain this fabulous web of life that we have inherited. We need to ask the question for the good of all life on Earth, what does nature need? Well, in 2009, conservationist Harvey Locke, working with the Wild Foundation, suggested an answer. Nature needs half. That's right. We need to protect half of every ecoregion on Earth, land and water, and we need to connect them back together so we once again have the real World Wide Web, the World Wide Web of life. Conservation needs to happen at the scale of the problems, which are planetary. And this is not a made-up number. Study after study in ecoregions from the Amazon to the Arctic show that if you want to keep an ecosystem and all its inhabitants alive, you need to protect at least half. And it's not an outrageous idea. People like nature. Communities that integrate nature are healthier and happier places to live. Density and nature are not enemies. They can work together for everyone's benefit. Nature needs half. When I first heard the idea, my reaction was, my gosh, that's a big ask. I've spent most of the last 30 years making conservation films. I've made shows about wilderness and sprawl, about coral reefs and logging. I've made films with elephants and lions and grizzly bears and whales. Most of my films were stories of conservation heroes doing incredible work to save the last bits of wild nature. But at the end of the day, there are not enough of us committed to this task, and we are losing ground. We need a big idea. We need a big solution to the extinction crisis. Nature Needs Half could be that idea, a clarion call to action at the scale that we need. And it's catching on. E.O. Wilson's recent book has the same proposal. He calls it Half Earth. But whatever you call it, One Earth or Half Earth or Nature Needs Half, the idea is the same. Our relationship with this planet is badly broken. We need a new story about how we live here. We need a relationship with the Earth that is thoughtful and balanced. 50-50, half and half, that sounds like a fair deal. And around the world, people are starting to think big. Here you see it. Nature Needs Half is possible in China. 
And then there's my favorite country in the world, Bhutan, where they have embraced not gross national product, but gross national happiness. In Bhutan, they understand one of the foundations of national happiness is a healthy environment. So they have protected more than half of their country in a connected system of protected areas from the high Himalayas to lowland jungles. They are maintaining healthy populations of the rarest and most endangered species in the world. This is what nature needs. Conservation groups around the world are starting to embrace the idea. Here's an article from the Rainforest Alliance, who's doing a lot of great work in the Amazon. And the Amazon is one place where nature, in fact, needs more than half. You may have heard that the rainforest makes its own rain. Well, here's how that works. At this latitude, easterly winds bring moisture in from the Atlantic Ocean, which falls as rain on coastal areas. It transpires through the forest, evaporates, and continues to move west. Each drop of rain falls and evaporates many times before this airflow hits the Andes. If we cut down too much of the forest, the rain will stop. And that's a big problem, because some of this moisture makes it as far north as the American breadbasket and as far east as Central Africa. And that's the function of rainforests around the world. They sequester carbon dioxide, they produce oxygen, and they circulate moisture around the planet. These are big structures that nature needs in order to keep working. So we need to practice conservation at the scale that protects not just individual places, that th but these big systems that support life as we know it. Here's a map of some of the large landscape and seascape conservation initiatives around the world. And there's the oceans. Recently, the United States made the largest marine protected area in the world, more than a million square kilometers. And these marine protected areas really work. They provide fish a place to breed and recover from constant human pressure. People who live near these places have better and more sustainable livelihoods. Nature Needs Half also recognizes the importance of traditional land tenure. Indigenous groups occupy more than a quarter of the intact ecoregions around the earth. And if you look at their traditions and their self-governance and their land use patterns, you will discover they are protecting at least half of the waters and lands where they live. These people need to be empowered to control their lands and not uprooted for short-term mineral and timber extraction. Indigenous reserves are a key part of what nature needs, a worldwide system of protected areas. So how are we going to get there? Well, in 1992, people were starting to wake up to the depth of the environmental crisis. So the United Nations convened the Rio Earth Summit. Two major threats to the planet were addressed, climate change and the loss of biodiversity. For climate, they made the United Nations Framework Convention for Climate Change. We've all heard of them. Their work has finally produced the Paris Accord of 2015. Less well known was the Convention on Biological Diversity, or the CBD, which was created to address the extinction crisis. After a few years of discussion, the CBD suggested conservation targets. Here's what they came up with. This is the number of scientific studies these numbers were based on. They came not from what nature needs, but what policymakers thought could be accepted. And when you ask policymakers and scientists how much of the earth we need to protect, you get very different answers. Who should we believe? In 2010, they revised these numbers. Who thinks this is enough? We need to raise our voices and push the CBD to what nature needs. We need a Paris Accord for Biodiversity a global deal for nature. And these two groups that were separated at birth should work together. Best to stop cutting primary forest can el eliminate a huge source of CO2, maybe 25% of current emissions, and it can happen really fast. Protecting nature is the first best thing we can do to work on the climate crisis. Well, there we are, back home. No matter what these international groups come up with, 
This will need the participation of every citizen on the earth. Most of us are part of the problem. Most of us need to be part of the solution. Nature Needs Half is a perfect opportunity to think global and act local. So go out and think global and vote for people who support conservation. And then go home and act local. Support smart land use and good growth in your communities. Bring nature into your cities and your towns. We will all be healthier and happier in a world where nature is present and thriving. And support the people who are working to save your favorite places or your most beloved species. My family and I are very fond of elephants, and we support several groups doing great work on elephant conservation. If you love the sea, you could find organizations doing fantastic work to protect the oceans and our relatives who live there. The time is now. It's all hands on deck. Nature needs half, and nature needs you. Thank you. And you. And you. Nature needs you. And you. Thank you.